I'm glad the Lord doesn't just throw me on the, the uh, trash pile of, of, of nothingness. Instead, He offers us His grace to restore us to fellowship and usefulness for Him. God's grace is essential not only for your salvation, but God's grace is essential for your daily living in His service. If, if you've ever tried to lose weight, you know uh, that it's very difficult. You put yourself on a diet, and uh, there are pitfalls to every diet. It's typically not a smooth process. It's not an easy process. It's usually not a quick process. Uh, we struggle, we fail, we start over. Well, here's some helpful rules that I ran across today to remember if we're trying to shed a few pounds. Number one, if nobody sees you eat it, it doesn't have any calories. Number two, if you drink a diet soda with a candy bar, the two cancel each other out. It's true with that. That's why I, that's why I get a Diet Coke with my Big Mac meal. <laughs> When eating with somebody else, you don't have to count the calories if you both eat the same thing. Number four, food used for medicinal purposes such as hot chocolate, toast, and Sara Lee cheesecake never count. And then five, if you fatten up everybody else around you, you you'll look thinner. <laughs> So enjoy your diet. Well, when Peter fell back to his old behavior patterns of relying on his strong will and relying on his own instincts rather than on the power of God, God didn't abandon him. God didn't forsake him. God didn't just cast him off. Instead, God extended grace to Peter uh, to bring him back into a right relationship with him and to prepare Peter for a life of service to the Lord Jesus Christ. Peter ultimately, when he was restored back into right relationship with Jesus, back into right relationship with God, after he had denied him, after he had forsaken him, when he, when he was brought back into right relationship with God, he ultimately served God to the death. He served God until he was martyred. He, his life was taken from him. That same process of relapse and restoration can happen with any of us. Listen, we, I, just, I just don't believe we can go too far. Uh, I, I believe that, that the moment we repent of our sin, I believe we can come back to the Lord Jesus Christ. If, if David could lie and David could steal and David could commit adultery and ultimately murder but still be used of God as a great king, I believe there's hope for me and you. Amen? So we're going to examine the things that the devil used to derail Peter. The first thing that we're going to look at in our study is this. I want you to notice uh, the relapse of Peter. Here, here's, kind of, here, here's kind of the context. The relapse of Peter. Peter began a life of faith. He began a life of service when he responded to Christ's call to leave his fishing boat. He was a great fisherman. God called him, or Jesus called him to leave his fishing boat and told him, I want you to become one of my disciples to be a fisher of men. I want you to go out and reach men for me. And so Peter started off in a life of faith. I mean, it took faith for Peter to say, okay, I'm going to leave behind my livelihood, my business of, of catching fish to go out and to follow you and to reach men for you. He had been an effective leader among the disciples. He was part of the inner circle of the Lord Jesus Christ with James and John. He spent three years walking with Christ closely. I mean, he was devoted to the Lord Jesus Christ. He listened to him. He was learning from the Son of God. Yet none of those things kept Peter from falling back into his old ways of dealing with problems when the pressure was on. Three specific things caused Peter's relapse back into his old ways. Number one was pride. Number one was pride. And I've got news for you. That's something every single one of us in here tonight struggle with. We all deal with pride. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says in Proverbs 16, 18, pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Peter, we would look at him and we would say, you know what? Peter's got great talents. Peter's got great ability." but he still fell into the trap of self-reliance rather than God-reliance. How often do we do that? How often do we rely on ourselves in certain areas in our lives 
instead of relying on God and His power to lead us. Pride keeps us from receiving God's grace. Listen to what the Bible says. 1 Peter 5.5 5 says, God resists the proud, but He gives grace to the humble. Somebody has said that pride is the disease that makes everyone sick except the one who has it. Pride is the disease that makes everyone sick except the one who has it. But we see Peter's pride manifested in two particular areas. Number one, Peter thought he was stronger than the others. Peter thought he was stronger than the others. In John 13, listen to verses 36 through 38. The Bible says, Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, whither thou goest, or where are you going? Jesus answered him, Whither I go, thou canst not follow me now, but thou shalt follow me afterward. Peter said unto him, Lord, why can I not follow thee now? I will lay down my life for thy sake. Jesus answered him, Wilt thou lay down thy life for my sake? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, The cock shall not crow till thou hast denied me three times. Peter's mistake lay in evaluating his own devotion by comparing it to those around him. That, that was one of the mistakes in his life. He believed that even if others turned their back on the Lord Jesus Christ, he said, I'll never do that. I'm willing to go to prison with you. I'm even willing to, to die for you and with you. You see, everything we have, including our strength and our dedication, is a gift from Almighty God. Everything that we have, our strength, our dedication, our devotion to God, it is a gift from Him. That realization right there should keep us from pride. We act foolishly when we compare ourselves to other believers. How many times have we said that? You know, oh, so-and-so, he's really weak in that area. She's really weak in that area. But, man, I am strong. I would never, I would never fail the Lord in that area in my life. You know what that is? prideful thinking. Pride goeth before destruction. The CEO of a Fortune 500 company pulled into a service station to purchase gas and he went inside to pay and when he came out he noticed that his wife was engaged in a discussion with the service station attendant. Well it turned out that she knew it. In fact back in high school before she met her husband she had dated this guy. So the CEO, after he had gone in and paid, he got in the car and the two drove away in silence. He was, he was feeling pretty good about himself. When, when he finally spoke, he said, I bet I know what you're thinking. I bet you're thinking that you're glad you married me, a Fortune 500 CEO, and not him, a service station. His wife looked at him and said, no. I was thinking if I'd married him, he'd be a Fortune 500 CEO and you'd be a service station attendant. <laughs> Absolutely. Never, never overestimate yourself. And then Peter underestimated the persistence of Satan. He underestimated the persistence of Satan. In Luke chapter 22, I want you to listen to the Word of God. In Luke chapter 22, verses 31 through 34, the Bible says, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy breath. And he said unto him, Lord, I'm ready to go with, it, with thee, both into prison and to death. And again, Jesus said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day, before that thou hast thrice denied that thou knowest me. Listen, the devil does not try just one or just twice to get us to sin. You've heard me say this before. He will wait as long as it takes to get us to fall. He will wait as long as it takes to get us to deny the Lord Jesus Christ in action, in, in, in uh, thought, or in words. He returns again and again, probing our defenses, looking for a place of weakness. Peter was inspired to write later that the devil was like a roaring line, walking about, seeking whom he may desire. So live each day with the realization that there is a target on your back as a believer. You know, sometimes we say, you know what, I, I told you a while ago, sometimes we have the attitude, I would, I would never fail Christ in that area. I'm strong in that area. Would you know that, that uh, pride 
If we're not careful, that, uh, that strength is a double weakness if we don't commit that strength to Almighty God and realize where we get that strength. When Jesus overcame the temptation in the wilderness, the devil, the Bible says, only left him for a season, according to Luke chapter 4 and verse 13. You see, as long as you live as a believer, you remain a target for Satan's attack. So don't let down your guard even for one moment. A victory today does not guarantee victory tomorrow. I'm going to say more about that Sunday morning in, in our, our message. Peter relapsed because he had a proud spirit, and as a result, he just underestimated his enemy. He underestimated the devil, and, and, and uh, he overestimated just how strong he was. All right? The second thing that caused Peter's relapse was this, not just pride, but prayerlessness. Prayerlessness. Now, where do we get that? Well, in Matthew chapter 26, beginning in verse number 34, listen to what the Bible says. Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this night before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee, thee yet will I not deny thee. Likewise also said all the disciples. Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto his disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray to him. And he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep. Saith unto Peter, What? Could ye not watch with me one hour? Then he said this, Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Pride precludes prayer because prayer is based on reliance and dependence upon God instead of self. Prayer is an assault on the autonomy of the human spirit. Though Jesus had just forewarned Peter, Peter, you're going to deny me, uh, Peter was sleeping instead of praying for strength. Uh, prayer is the means by which we obtain the power of God to fight to win our battles that we face every day. There is awesome power in prayer. Listen to what William Cowper wrote. He was a hymn writer. He wrote this. Restraining prayer, we cease to fight. Prayer makes the Christian's armor bright. And Satan trembles when he sees the weakest saint upon his knees. Now think of the contrast. Think of the contrast. Jesus, preparing for the coming ordeal of the cross, he urgently desired to pray. However, Peter, ignoring the coming temptation to deny Christ, he urgently desired to sleep. He did not value prayer as a vital and essential resource to victory. Listen, our flesh, my flesh, cannot withstand the attacks of the devil. I can't do it. I can't do it in my strength alone. There's absolutely no way. I need the supernatural power of God to help me withstand the attacks of the devil. And so do you. And one of the ways we call on the power of God is through prayer. Let us not be prayerless Christians. And let us not be a prayerless church. Amen? The strength to triumph comes only through prayer. So Peter relapsed because of his pride, because of prayerlessness. But here's what I want you to see last. He relapsed because of his position. His position. Now let me show you what I mean by that. Luke 22, I'm going to begin reading in verse 54. Listen very carefully. Then took they him and led him and brought him into the high priest's house, speaking of Jesus. Now listen to this. And Peter followed afar off. And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall and were set down together, Peter sat down among them. But a certain maid beheld him as he sat by the fire and earnestly looked upon him and said, This man was also with him. Peter denied him, saying, Woman, I, I know him not. And after a little while, another saw him and said, Thou art also of them. And Peter said, Man, I'm not. And about the space of one hour after another confidently affirmed, saying, Of a truth, this fellow was with him, for he is a Galilean. And Peter said, Man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately while he yet spake, what happened? The cock crew. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said unto him before the cock crew, Thou shalt deny me. Peter went out. 
Peter followed far off. Following Jesus afar off, listen to me, is a dangerous position. It's a dangerous position. The only place for a Christian, the only place for a Christian to walk is in close proximity to Jesus Christ. That is the only place for us to walk. We ought to always want to be in his Peter, who only hours before had boasted of the depth of his commitment, he was now warming himself by the enemy's fire and denying that he ever knew Jesus Christ. So, will I, will you, will we be the same Christian at work tomorrow that we are at church tonight? Will we be as committed to follow him when we are challenged by others tomorrow as we're committed tonight? Are we praying for strength to fight the enemy or are we relying on our own power? Father, we love you. Lord, uh, just the first part of this lesson is very convicting. It's very telling. It has a mountain of truth in it. Lord, I pray that we would not get sidetracked by our own pride. Lord Jesus, I pray that we would not be guilty of prayerlessness. Lord, I pray that we would position ourselves close to you each and every day. Lord, that we might be able to fight the battles of the day. Lord, I pray that you would remind me every single day that I've got a target. Jesus, I, I cannot win the battle without you. Lord, I pray that you would help me every day to pursue, pursue holiness so that sinfulness won't catch me as it pursues me. Lord Jesus, I pray everybody in here tonight would commit right now to keeping their eyes squarely upon you. I pray, Lord Jesus, we would commit tonight ourselves before you. Lord, may we commit tonight to being on our knees in prayer. God, may we commit tonight not to walk afar off, but to walk with you each and every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, don't forget now, Sunday morning, 845, first service, Sunday school at 10, second worship at 11. And then Sunday night at 6 p.m., I want you to continue to work hard. I was talking to one of our Sunday school teachers, uh, one of our classes, uh, uh, one of our ladies' classes. They had 30 ladies in their class Sunday morning. And uh, so let's continue to work. Let's reach out, bring people with us. Some of the greatest Bible teaching they'll get is right here at Blue Ridge View Baptist Church. Uh, I can't tell you how good my Sunday school lesson was last Sunday. Uh, I told them in there, once again, if you've got to miss an hour, don't miss Sunday school. You're going to get some good teaching there. You just sacrifice worship to go to Sunday school. God bless you.